Scene 5. Time. One month later. Place. An office in the prison. The room is sparsely furnished. Eugene is wearing a prison jumpsuit. He is sitting in a chair. Sitting opposite Eugene is a middle-aged woman, Dr. Cara Cornblow. My name is Dr. Cara Cornblow. I have been asked by the court to evaluate your competency to stand trial. Do you understand? Yes. Do you also understand that this examination is not confidential and that what we say here will generate a report that will be shared with the court? Yes, I understand. <clears throat> what is your name? Eugene Lasofsky. How old are you? 50 years old. Where were you born? Brooklyn, New York. Were you ever married? No, never married. But I'm still looking. How about you? Mr. Lasofsky, <laughs> let's stay on track. Now, are your parents alive? My parents? I mean, what does any of this have to do with my parents? You know, I, I'd rather talk about you. So, how about it? Me and you do a little tete-a-tete -tete on the desk? <laughs> that would not be appropriate. <laughs> yeah, stop being so formal. You know? Just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you don't have, well, feelings. You're making this quite difficult. <laughs> Do you have a problem answering my questions? Uh, I think it's you that has a problem answering my questions. You do understand that you're under a court order to be examined. Of course, I understand that. I just did not know that I was supposed to follow some kind of prearranged script. What makes you think there's a prearranged script? Well, from the way you're hiding behind those ridiculous questions, so you don't have to talk to me. But that's typical for a woman, always wanting to be in control. So, is this what all this is about to you? A struggle for control? Oh, good lord, no. How can a lady as attractive as you be so dense? I'm sorry if I don't meet your expectation. But I have a job to do, and I want to get it done. And now you're just brushing me off. Are you like this on your dates? I hope you understand <laughs> that this is not a date. I know that, my dear. I was just playing. I hope I didn't offend you. <laughs> you did not offend me. However, I want to know this. Do you tend to be argumentative with women? No, I protect women. Even when they reject you? Who said anything about rejection? It's my understanding that you stabbed your friend who was getting married to a woman who had rejected you. Isn't that correct? Incorrect. I drove away an evil spirit which had taken possession of a human body that just happened to be my friend. That's what happened. There was no rejection. To suggest otherwise is insulting and degrading to me, and I won't stand for it. Hey, hey, is everything okay over here? Everything is fine, officer. Okay, uh, I'm just checking. Who's he? His boyfriend? No, he's a prison guard who works here. I saw the way he looked at you. He seemed to be quite interested in your welfare. He just wanted to make sure that everything was fine. That's his job. I understand that. I'm not a dunce. I just want to know why you chose to show up at that very moment. Why do you think? I don't know. All we were doing was talking. It's not like I, I grabbed you or something. Did you want to do that? Do what? <laughs> Grab me. No. <laughs> just talking. I don't treat women like that. What about men? How do you treat them? I'm not gay, if that's what you're driving at. What about with Victor? I, I, didn't be, I didn't kill him because he was diddling me, okay? Victor was possessed by the evil spirit. What does this evil spirit look like? <laughs> uh, I don't know. He can take any form. Is the evil spirit here with us in this room? You know, for a while, I thought the evil spirit was inside that guard, but nothing happened to you, so I, I could rule that out. What would have happened to me? Well, if that guard was possessed, he would have done something to drive you away from me. Like what? Cause you to start yelling at me, or taunt me, or laugh at me, like all women do. Including Yvette at the wedding, when she was acting so flighty with me. Maybe she was happy. She was only acting happy. How long did you know Victor? Since we were kids. How did you get along with him as kids? Fine. We were the best of friends. 
but then he went away to college, and after that, we didn't uh, interact very often. That's rough. It was. It was almost like losing the brother uh, I never had. When did the evil spirit take possession of Victor? I can't say for certain, but I believe it was while he was at co away at college, because when he returned, he had changed. In what way? Uh, he came back with an attitude. You know, like he was stuck up. And that was because he was possessed. Yes. I mean, there can be no ex other explanation. You sound certain about that. Well, that's because I am. I, I could see it in his eyes. The eyes don't lie, and I could hear it in his laughter, which was completely demonic. That must have been frightening. No, not frightening. Confusing. How so? I wondered why the evil spirit would have chosen Victor. And then I realized why. The evil spirit was out to destroy me and obliterate all vestiges of my blood. You said you were an only child. Yes, and with me destroyed, my parents would never be able to rest at peace, and I could not bear the thought of that happening. So when did your parents pass away? My father died in 1986, and my mother in 1992, both from natural causes. Did you have any aunts or uncles? I have no relatives, just me. All my relatives died in the Holocaust. My parents were sole survivors, so if I die, my bloodline will be gone. But why would the evil spirit want to end your bloodline? Because I am the reincarnation of the chief rabbi of worms, who in 1283 purged the evil spirit from a beautiful Jewish woman whose body the spirit had defiled. Before he fled, however, he swore that as an act of revenge, he would destroy my bloodline if it took all eternity. And with my parents gone and no relative left, no relatives left, he finally had his chance. <laughs> That's some history. Would you mind if I asked you a few more mundane questions? Go ahead. I knew we'd get back to that. What is your work history? Uh, I was employed by the city for 24 years. First as a caseworker for the Department of Social Welfare, and then for the past 10 years as a social worker for the Department of City Hospital. Do you understand what you've been charged with? Yes, I do. Could you tell me the charges? Of course. First degree murder. Who did you allegedly murder? Victor Dennerman. Is it really necessary to ask me all these questions? All of this, all of this was discussed in court. Yes, it is. Because I'm being asked to assess your competency to stand trial. You're wasting your time. There's nothing wrong with me upstairs. That's good to know. Anyway. Your attorney felt that this evaluation was necessary, and the court agreed. I don't care what my lawyer said. Look, I, I, know, I know that all this talk about evil spirits, it may sound bizarre, but I'm not insane. I knew exactly what I was doing. What do you mean? Victor Dennerman was out to destroy me, and I couldn't let that happen. And that's because you wanted to protect your bloodline? Correct. It makes sense to me. Doesn't it make sense to you? Frankly, no. <laughs> but I'm not here to debate you or to catch you in a lie. I don't lie. I tell the truth. I didn't say you don't tell the truth. But let me ask you this. How exactly did Victor go about trying to destroy you? He did it through his whiny, high-pitched laughter. Actually, it was more like a girlish giggle, which rattled my brain and made me feel nauseous. In fact, recalling it now is even making me feel sick. <laughs> so, because of his laughter, which made you nauseous, you felt you had to kill him. That, that's right. And, um, so, or I would have died, and, and with me, my bloodline, which was destined to continue through me and Yvette. Oh, so that's <laughs> where Yvette fits in. Yes. Could you further elaborate? Uh, it's, it's very simple. Victor had a diabolical laugh, which was meant to kill me, which he wanted to do before I could plant my seed inside Yvette. Plant your seed? Could you please explain this further? 